My E55 has been suffering from a random misfire mystery for months, and today we're going to have a short case study on just why I keep saying these things are reliable if I'm having all these problems. So today, this car is going to show us just how good it is. The last major problem that this car had was a common conductor plate issue last October, and at almost 200,000 miles, it was really no surprise. Shortly after that, I was driving slower than normal as I was traveling with a family in another vehicle. So I was cruising along and all of a sudden, the car lost some power and seemed sluggish on throttle response. The instant thought was to check gauges and everything looked pretty good. So I made a decision that when a car is acting up and it's still running, then keep it running and try to get it home to your shop. A few miles later and thought provoking what's wrong questions you ask yourself, I made it home and couldn't figure out why it was missing. I turned it off and then back on again and voila, it ran perfect. Test drove it again and it was perfect. The next time it happened was over a month later. As it started to get cooler and over a period of a few weeks, it seemed that as long as I didn't drive slow and gave her the good old Italian tune up while driving, it was fine. And also, it only seemed to be missing after a hot start. A simple restart always fixed it. Being cold out and focused on some other events in my life, I didn't take a real hard look at it, but recently it started getting much worse, missing once every five to 10 minutes, but still kind of random. Now I've already replaced the spark plugs a year ago with NGK Iridiums and inspected the wires and coils. And while I seen a small crack in a few of the coils, up until now it ran perfect. An M113 coil failure is a bit of a rarity. I searched online and got the same type of information as you get when searching a health problem. Either the car has a small issue like bad fuel or bad coil, all the way to check compression and figure out why you toasted your engine or ruined your injector driver in your ECU. It's a bit unusual for an engine to misfire at low throttle and not high throttle. Not finding anything matched even close to my symptoms, I bailed on the browser tabs and decided to attack this problem the way I knew best, which is dive in with an analytical mind and hope for a positive outcome. Plugging in the old CarSoft laptop, I pulled a Cylinder 6 misfire code along with the generic misfire code. Keep in mind, it only happened randomly, so diagnosing this was going to require multiple starts, warm-ups to repeat the misfire causing conditions. I pulled both Cylinder 6 spark plugs and they looked nice and tan, absolutely normal and not lean and white. So then I unplugged the coil to number 6 just to make sure that the OBD picked up the right cylinder as sometimes these cars can read it a bit wrong. Well confirmed, it was Cylinder 6. I then replaced the coil with a known good used one I have as well as the two plug wires, so I threw those on too. I could have moved all of them to another plug, but since I had spares, I decided to just replace them and try that. It did nothing. Same thing. Go drive, come back missing. Now once a car misfires too much, the ECU's job is to shut off the injector until it restarts, so it never fixes itself while driving. At this time, I started to hear a whistle noise, and I couldn't find it as it was hard to hear the exact area where it was coming from. So then I grabbed a can of carb cleaner and started spraying small amounts around the area where I thought the noise was coming from while it idled, and voila, it almost killed the engine when I sprayed near the valve cover. Or was it the valve cover? This month's No Purchase Necessary US Only giveaway is live now, and this month it's winner's choice. First choice is a set of expensive, rare, factory W210 E55 floor mats we cleaned in a previous video. Option two is 50 US dollars mailed to your door. Option three is three investment grade 99.99% pure one ounce silver Canadian maples made by the Royal Canadian Mint. These investment grade $5 coins are a great thing to have in these crazy times. To enter, all you have to do is leave a comment below with two things. One, tell me which item you would like if you win, and two, tell me what your favorite Mercedes of all time is. That's it. Easy peasy. Actually, it turned out it was my injector number six seal leaking. Then I determined cylinder five and seven were also leaking. I took off the plastic cover to reveal the hidden one of the two fuel rail bolts on this side and it was backed out about four millimeters and was allowing the injectors randomly to lift up out of the intake holes, eventually rubbing and wearing the injector o-rings out. When an engine is idling, it's near maximum vacuum, so as you give it throttle, the vacuum is decreased and therefore that was causing the injectors to pulsate in and out of the intake manifold, causing the issue. I went to AutoZone and got some injector o-rings that perfectly matched these for $6.99 and what do you know? Fixed it immediately. No more misfires. Followed up my fix with glorious long drives on the tight twisties, enjoying the results of solving the problem. Well, it might be a little bit of a rainy day, but that doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of fun. This thing runs so good. This baby pose. I 
you may ask yourself, how did that bolt back out? This is the part I can only kick myself for. I replaced the injector seals on this motor over three years ago trying to diagnose a faulty fuel pump, and I must have either not tightened it down enough or just not enough for thousands of miles. The only other explanation I could think of is the metal degrading between the deteriorating intake and maybe the bolt, perhaps allowing it to loosen over time, but it seems to thread in just fine, so I think I'm gonna rule that out for now. I will keep an eye on this pesky little bolt. It turns out I was the weakest link for this engine, and thankfully a link that only cost me $6.99 to fix. And the other lesson I learned is sometimes you have to trust yourself. And you can figure out a problem using good old fashioned critical thinking and problem solving skills. Cheers, my friends, and may you solve your problems with greater speed than I did. And until next time, bye for now.